Good afternoon and welcome to Turbo Tortoise Tech. If you're new here, my name is Reese for Peace from KFC or Wookie Triple XL, and I'd like to start off this review by formally welcoming you to 2021's content schedule, which is going to be action packed to say the least. We are changing how we are delivering content up to you guys just a little bit. So you're going to see me on Mondays with reviews, Wednesdays with my suggestions of the specials page, and then Fridays with another review. So starting off on this Tuesday now, because uh, I had some very strange bug bears. I basically ruined 30 minutes worth of footage because my mic was in the wrong setting and like something had damaged the connection a bit, but I seemed to have fixed it. So anywho, Predator XP3 series, really, really nice is the bullet point of this presentation. Uh, price versus performance is absolutely exceptional and now you have to get HDR 400 with pretty much any monitor you're looking to buy because it's really is the next game changer but getting back to this series of monitor now the xp3s obviously share a number of physical features that are going to be the same because they're keeping that as their premium edition of of monitors it goes all the way from a 25 inch 144 hertz g-sync all the way to a 1440p 240 hertz 27 this is the 1080p variant over here and it's also rather good so as i said they have like those physical similarities those being the way that they've executed the stands really nice aluminium base i love the gunmetal gray finish on it looks absolutely fantastic does take out a little bit of desk space but as you can see with the 27 i've got it pivoted on the stand so these can actually tilt quite far left and right on that stand so you'll be able to get into the esports intimacy position get nice and close up on the monitor it's got a periscope neck as well that has a nice cha channeling piece at the back for your cables and then a little kick out for the headphone stand. As I've shown you, these also tilt and swivel quite nicely. So overall movement and adjustability is 10 out of 10. And especially the 25 has some pretty extreme range. If I just get Alveda out of the way there, you can see it goes from all the way down there to all the way up there. The 27 is a little bit less travel because it's a bigger monitor you obviously can't go quite so far up and down but it's enough that it was extremely comfortable when i was using it i literally no laughed on this 27 for about three weeks and i've I'm, I'm literally going to be buying one of those and i'll get to that why in a few moments moving on though with their similarities both of them have ips panels both of them are G-Sync and both have HDR 400. If you're wondering why that one looks a little bit washed out, it's because I've actually intentionally disabled it to show you what it, how much it changes when you do turn it on. So if we're going to the settings here, there's two settings, there's an auto and a 400. They make a little bit of difference between the two, not really that much. You won't see too much changing visually. I found that auto was generally the best and suddenly everything's popping on that background, isn't it? All the colors just, got their vibrance up uh, well a lot in hdr mode you can't really adjust your brightness you have to use the video control panel to do so but if you throw like 10 percent vibrance at this hdr mode colors pop out in a way that is simply inexplicable it changes the game day and night does the ips and hdr 400 the overall presentation of these colors is some of the best that i've ever seen as I said, there's also G-Sync on both of these and then an advanced sort of delay reduction technology. This can go as low as 0.9 milliseconds on the grade to grade time. This can go as low as 0.1. I use them both at the normal one millisecond or two millisecond default and they're absolutely fantastic on both. Of course, the 240 is just, well, it's a 240 hertz G-Sync. It's literally always a good time. First time I used that was about 18 months ago. Actually, it was a bit longer than that. It's one of the one of the very first reviews we did on this channel was on a 25-inch 240Hz G-Sync display, and that was already over nine and a half thousand rand. It was a VA panel, which is which is very good as well. It's just not comparable to the IPS with the HDR technology. You remove the IPS glow. It's something I experienced uh, a little bit last year as well, and now in extremes with this 27. As far as the borders of the monitor go, you've got eight millimeter borders all around the edge and then a nice two millimeter sort of finish with that. So, well, the overall is eight millimeters. Then the bottom pieces are 20 and 22 millimeters respectively. So it's got a nice sort of look and feel like that. From behind, there's nothing majorly design wise that sort of pops out at you. And I'm actually really okay with that. I think creating extremely flashy backings for monitors is only good for esports events or when you're trying to flex at lands. 
Now the port setup is one of the shining examples of the sort of premium checkbox that they're doing. There's two HDMI 2.0s per monitor, plus a display port, plus then a USB hub, which is built into each of them, a USB 3 hub, and it's the full power hub as well. So you get four ports of USB 3 at full power, two of them on the side of the panel, and then two of them on the bottom as well. So you don't need to really uh, channel extra cables and stuff to your monitor for your peripherals. You could actually use them all of the monitor, absolutely no problems. And then there's a nice little 3.5 millimeter headphone jack for audio pass through as well. Adding on to that, the cables that they give you are some of the best that I've ever seen. Most of the time they usually give you one or the other other than HDMI 2.0 or the display port with this but in this kit for instance you get the USB 3 connection then you get a display port 1.4 and then an HDMI 2.0 I really like that it's a nice touch it's it's completing that package with the headphone stand and all of that sort of stuff it's giving you that ultra grade premium monitor now I've discussed where these two are similar Obviously, they start to, to differentiate as we go a little bit down the road. As I say, 144 Hz IPS HDR 400. As a 24 inch or 25 inch experience, this is really good. Price versus performance is really, really solid as well. You're looking at about 6,800 for this at the moment. And then the 240 Hz 27. This thing is just absolutely fantastic. It's got a delta E of less than two. So what does that mean? In layman's terms, it's your color accuracy versus print or versus other colors so that the color variance is much lower on the default settings or on the sRGB setting than it would be with a standard panel. So this can be used for design as well. And to get to that point, I used to use something called a color monkey back in the day when I was looking after some designers. And what you would do is print out a page and then scan the colors off of that and then it'll match them versus the colors on the screen and apply a color profile so that those are matched with your printer. But then it's limited to whatever's coming out of that printer. So this should take care of it on the baseline of the Delta E, which is the international standard. It's kind of like A plus for power supplies, but it's the same thing for color reproduction. Now, I hear you guys saying, but 1080p on 27, wasn't it grainy? Surprisingly not. It was actually really, really sharp. Overall, the image quality difference between the two, you can see it in things like icons and stuff, but on, in gaming and stuff, I literally had maybe one texture for 10 minutes in a game that made me feel like it was grainy. Having 240Hz G-Sync for things like Counter-Strike, for example, on 1080p, where it gives you the max, max frame rates, like 400 FPS, it's as smooth as you could possibly imagine. The difference between 60 and 144 is much more noticeable than the difference between 144 to 240. But once you've used 240 with G-Sync, it is noticeable. When I went back to my normal 24 inch 1080p, it felt the sharpness and stuff felt sort of the same. But objects in the distance in games were much, much, much harder to see, just even with those three inches corner to corner. I mean, it, well, you can see with the size of it, you are getting quite a lot more height and quite a lot more breadth because that rating is from corner to corner. So with some uh, quick maths Pythagoras theorem, you do get quite a lot more real estate on the screen. The 27 then with all of those feature sets coming in at 9,000 Rand is an absolute bargain, all things considered. Literally, my only gripe with these monitors, pretty much at all, is the fact that they only come with a two-year warranty. I'd really like Asus to extend that, even if it meant it came with a five or 10% premium on the price, it would just make them that much better of a buy because your guaranteed cost of ownership will become, well, three times or 30% or, or better in all cases. That's really the only thing about these monitors that I would say needs to be improved. Overall, the execution, the color control and stuff on these monitors is some of the best I've ever seen. And when you're playing games like oh, big open world games like uh, Cyberpunk or Escape from Tarkov, etc., I literally thought they had updated portions of the game graphics in Escape from Tarkov because of the HDR. And that's just a monitor function. So as the games get better with HDR functionality, it's just gonna look better and better. And early editions of HDR when they came out were a little bit rubbish, if we're honest. And that is just no longer the case. Now it is that premium, next premium tick on a panel. You're looking at that one millisecond or two millisecond response time, you're looking for that G-Sync, etc. HDR, 
should be on your list 100%. You've seen like with the live demo. I'm actually gonna just one second while I set up them to duplicate and I'm gonna put on a little video just to further show you why you really need this. A few moments later, well, just as an example with them not duplicated, you can see what I mean about the color reproduction on this guy just being absolutely out of control. I believe that this is in the same HDR mode. It is, they are both on auto right now, but this 27 just pops like on another level. So if I just go even further into it, I wanna show you the, the, the lizard, my, my screen testing lizard. You're gonna see a lot of this lizard. He's a good lizard. I don't have ad blocker installed. I'm a good guy like that. So here is the Mr. Lizard we're talking about. The reason I absolutely love this picture is because if you look at the front of his snout there, he's also got a little bit of flesh, normal sort of fleshy tones and stuff coming through. The lighting on his eye is absolutely fantastic. And then the reflections and stuff on the scales is just, it's, it's such a nice testing area for HDR because it's going to be brighter than normal monitors on those reflective surfaces. And you can see between the two, there is a little bit of an extra sharpness because you got more pixels per inch, but it's not that much as I thought it would be. And then because of gaming, 240 hertz and the color on this, it was just, like I say, this thing lived on my table right throughout the holidays and I've just had just the best time with it. It's, it's really, it's so nice. It is so, such a, it's pretty much, this is my favorite monitor that I've used in the last two years, this XB23. Uh, XP327 at least and then they're making a 1440p version of it which hopefully will come to South Africa. Asa if you're watching this please let the XP327 1440 come to South Africa because I think that's going to be just even better than it already is. And yeah about that warranty maybe, maybe make a plan there will be great thanks. Anyway that is all we have time for in this review. If you have enjoyed it then please do hit us up with a like and subscribe and I'll see you on the flip side. A few moments later.